Welcome back to Sunless Sea. In the last episode, Captain Abner Marsh met his very unfortunate and watery demise. Or was it watery? He did kind of die in a engine explosion. Maybe it was an explosive death? Or a fire death? Did I burn to death and then sink in the water, or did I burn and then drown to death in the water? Hmm. Uh, let's not think about it. That's an unpleasant line of thought. Anyway, I'm pretty damn proud of what I managed to accomplish, though. I lasted for about nine hours on my first serious playthrough. I think that's pretty impressive. And it's pretty damn hard to actually survive in such an unforgiving world, so... Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Now there's nothing to be done but take what knowledge I've gained from my experience, and of course the extra massive boost of money, and carry on faster and stronger than before. So let's make a new person. Let's choose a past. Okay, so my last character was Abner Marsh, which was from the novel Fever Dream, and this time I'm going to go with a different character from the same novel. I'm going to go with Joshua York. Who was another? Who was a friend of Abner Marsh? And Joshua York is actually a vampire, and he's quite a gentleman. He's basically, uh, well, yeah, he's a gentleman. He he dresses sharp. He's extremely intelligent. He's a vampire, so he's rather strong, incredibly fast, has incredible eyesight, burns in the sun, which I think makes a freaking perfect character to kind of try to roleplay in this world, because, I mean, who would be better in this sort of environment than a vampire? It's the sunless sea. There's no sun to burn them. It's perfect. It's freaking awesome. And there's bats everywhere. I mean, a vampire just fits into this world perfectly. So yeah, he's a smart man of science, very calm, very well-reasoned. So, with Abner Marsh, I went with somebody who was, his main quality was iron. You know, he's kind of a brute. But this guy is going to be more, more, more calm, more considered in his responses. So, let's see. A street urchin? Nope. Definitely, definitely not a veteran. Definitely not a priest. <laughs> uh, a vampire priest? No. A natural philosopher? Maybe. It's either that or a poet. Joshua York did like poetry. I think he even maybe did poetry, I can't quite remember. But I think a philosopher probably fits him better. Let's see, your peculiar theories on time, blood, and starlight brought you down to the Neath, the cavern where London lies. Oh, I've got to go with this. Yeah, look at this. He gives you a bonus to mirrors, the skill of detection and perception. This is awesome for two reasons. One, it fits his character perfectly. Because Mirror makes you basically better at detecting things, and in the book, he was... He had incredible eyesight because, well, he's a freaking vampire. He's basically superhuman. But it's also ironic, because it's, it's a bonus to mirrors. And what's the classic thing? Vampires can't see themselves in mirrors? Except, the funny thing is, in the book, that was kind of a joke. Like, the book throws away the... Uh, a lot of the typical stereotypes about the things that, like, the typical properties and things that repel vampires, like garlic and can't see yourself in mirrors and uh, silver repels them, that sort of stuff. It's all a bunch of bullshit in the book. So that is particularly ironic and I love it. Mmm, delicious irony. Gained 25 mirrors. And now I have a plausible surgeon. What does that mean? Plausible surgeon? Does that mean you looked at his credentials and thought, eh, he could have been a surgeon. Maybe. I don't think I'd want a plausible surgeon to operate on me. Ugh. What am I looking for? Hmm. To be honest, none of these actually fit the main goal of Joshua York in the book. I would say what his actual main goal in the book is, but to be honest, I don't want to spoil it. Because the other stuff I mentioned is stuff that's 
either obvious or not really a spoiler. But if I mention the main goal of what he's trying to accomplish, that actually is a pretty big spoiler. So, I won't. But yeah, none of these fit. Hmm. Wealth. Nah, Joshua didn't care, care about wealth. Although he, he was wealthy. But he didn't really care about wealth. It was just a tool to him. Not something to, to strive for. Fulfillment. Your father's bones. You know what? That actually kind of fits. I mean, it doesn't parallel what he wanted to do in the book, but that actually kind of fits his character. For reasons that I won't go into. But I'm going to go with your father's bones. So your father was lost at Z? You never knew him, but you've often dreamed of him. Find and return his remains to London for a decent burial. I wonder how that works, by the way. I mean, how do you actually bring about that end condition? Do your father's bones just pop up on some random island and... And that's it? Like, is it randomized, or... Or what? I don't know. Don't worry. I'm gonna be in a watery grave long before I ever find out. Find where he fell and bring him home. Explore fallen London to find your first clue. Oh, I get to follow clues. Cool! Do I file like a do I do I follow like a, a breadcrumb of my father's bones? Like, ooh, there's a tailbone. Ooh, there's an elbow. Wait, an elbow? Is an elbow even a bone? What I mean, an elbow's formed where two bones meet, right? I d I don't know. I don't know shit about anatomy. And what I choose to be referred to. Hmm. I feel like Captain doesn't fit. My lord. He is a fine, respectable person. My lord would actually fit. But also, sir. Um, yeah, let's go with my lord. A pleasure to welcome you on board, my lord. Wait, did I capitalize the first letter? Did I capitalize that J? Oh yeah, it's capitalized. Alright, what's a good portrait? Hmm. Somebody who looks fine and gentlemanly. Clean shaven. Hmm, I don't see anybody that actually particularly fits. Um, well, yeah, I guess that kind of fits. I mean, it looks like he has a mustache, and I don't think Joshua ever actually had a mustache, but... Yeah, that's fine. Your father lost at Z so very long ago. The trail was cold, but now you have a lead. The Gracious Widow. It is said that she controls half the crime in London. It is said that she is 500 years old. It is said that she can distill spirits that delight the tongue and melt the flesh. It is said that she has paid for a memorial headstone to be set up for your father. What does she know? The Night Under the Earth The widow receives you in utter darkness, blank as a bandage laid across your eyes. This is usual for the widow. Yes, she says, and her voice is oddly youthful. I have an interest in your father. I had hoped news of the headstone would bring someone looking, and here you are. I have an idea where his bones might be. Perhaps you will help me recover them. But I would like you to cover my expenses first. I need something for my tonics. Skintelic. You can find it in Port Cecil, I understand. You may go. Skintelic? Sintelic? I have no idea what that is. Hopefully it's not expensive. Bring a unit of Sintelic from Port Cecil for the Widow. 
Poor Cecil can be found in the center of the Untersee near the Canate. Okay. Doesn't sound too bad. Alright, this is the captain's book. Just a little tutorial thing. Just gonna sell this thing. 50 Echo, thank you. And what to do? It's so exciting. I've got a freaking new ship. I've got eight crew. I've got a plausible surgeon. <laughs> it says he probably won't saw the wrong limb off. Yeah. I guess you always start out with a really crappy person. First it was the shady cook, and now it's the plausible surgeon. Let's see. Um... I think I'm just going to start out by buying an engine. I do have the money. Yeah, plenty of uh, plenty of fuel, plenty of supplies. Well, kind of. It's actually not all that much fuel or supplies, but it's enough, I guess. So yeah, let's buy this one. And do I have enough money to replace my weapon? I think I do. So which one did I get before? Was it this one? This seems too good. Actually, this seems really good. Wait a minute, a forward weapon. I don't actually have a slot for that, do I? No, I don't. Whoops. Okay, forget that one. It's the deck weapon. Deck, 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 deck. There we go. I think this is the one I got. Yeah, 15 damage. And the one I have by default is 8 damage. Yeah. Yeah, so let's go ahead and grab this one. Yeah, unfortunately, I do not do nearly as much damage as I did before because my iron skill is not nearly as high. But the good thing is, my mirror skill means that I can fire a lot faster. So, it might actually even out in the end. Not sure. Okay. What else to do? So, done the bones thing. Uh, let's read the morning papers, of course. Thank you. Labyrinth of Tigers. What in the hell is this? The Labyrinth of Tigers is open under the patronage of the London Zoological Society to cautious visitors for educational purposes. Here you may see the devil apes of Farm Mandalay, the thing in the mirror, the canting... What the hell? Stay okay, so scary stuff. Gotcha. Why is the sign yelling at me? So rude. Oh, whoa! This takes one harlot fry. How come this never popped up before? When I actually had the harlot fry after killing that she-beast. Whatever the hell that was. Provide a rare creature for the of the labyrinth. That would have been cool. Or I can purchase a specimen for an incredibly large sum. I don't want to do either. Do do do. Hire on more crew. Nope, I'll wait. Offer passage to a tomb colonist. Sure. Come aboard. Now, what about port reports? Oh, right. I can't speak to the Admiralty yet. But I can visit the office. Let me just ask if they have anything in particular they need. And ugh, they want to know about the funging station again. Hopefully this time I can actually find it before eight hours have passed. Okay. Let's go. So I've got a tomb colonist aboard. Oh my god, look at this. And again, randomized island locations. I think locations are kind of like general. Um, in the sense that 
it's gonna be kind of in the same general area in terms of, I think, like, difficulty and stuff. I think. So, I don't, I don't think it's completely randomized. I think it's just semi-randomized. But I think that's only for the islands. I mean, I'm assuming directly above me is still gonna be Vendor Bite. So, I think I'm just gonna go there first. Take my Tomb Colonist over there. I gotta remember to visit everything. Oh, Hunter's Keep is still here. And these story events are gonna go a lot faster because I'm not going to read them. Not the ones I've already done. Present myself to the sisters. Acquainted. Collect a port report. Use up my time away from port or whatever to speak with them. No, they're not speaking to me. Let's give them the recent news. Speak to Cynthia. And we're good. I guess I should probably stick close to the coast. Ooh, hello. Easy prey. Let's wait for it to spin around, though. Want to ram it in the ass. Ooh, that sounded naughty. There we go. Now's my chance. Oh, wait. Did you see me? Mm, no, it didn't. Okay. Go. And you are dead. Two supplies? Why, thank you. Let's get these locations discovered for the fragments. I do believe this is Vendor Bite. Trouble with the tomb colonists. Is he gonna try to fight me like he did last time? Apparently not. It is everything I imagined, he tells you breathlessly. But there's something missing. Please, bring her to me. Hmm? Bring who? A vague commission. She went off to the Mangrove College. She needed to get out of London. But Venderbite is just as safe as the college. And I'll wager she's bored of mud by now. Look for this shady sort in the Mangrove College, somewhere in the south of the Untersea. Hmm. Interesting. That's, uh, <laughs> it's pretty vague. Somewhere in the south of the Untersea. South is pretty damn big. Ah, yes. Let's visit the first curator again and get the quest. Let's accept the commission. Let's gather gossip. Got the port report. Explore. And something happened. 
Let's see. Remnants. In a wide open space behind the hollow temple, you happen across a stepped platform of sorts. Four statues guard it, marked with glyphs all but lost to time and idle vandalism. They look a little like the glyphs that decorate the Echo Bazaar in London, though. At the heart of the platform is a long-filled well shaft, too. You poke about briefly, but something in the place makes you uneasy. A frost moth, the size of a farmer's hand, flutters down to perch on the well's edge. Another. A third. You retreat. Strange. Thankfully all it did was creep me out of bed and give me some fragments, so I'll take it. Okay, um... Where to now? I don't know. I guess just... Keep going. I think I'll go east. What I really want to find is the salt lands, because I really want to do that trade route again. Son of a bitch! It's only two damage, but left him with one hit point. It's unfortunate. Well, I guess I'll butcher it. I don't really have much hunger, but whatever. My fuel is actually kind of low. It's fine. Shepherd Isles. Let me see if I can avoid its attack. Um, yes. So, so far, everything that I've found seems to be roughly in the same position. But some things should be different. Compile a report. You know, as much as I want the Citral Ridden Navigator, if I pay 50 Echo, I won't have enough Echo to actually take the Sphinx Stone. Because I need a 200 deposit. So I want to stay above 200. Let's hear the Tales of Thornwell Croft. Now this one I don't believe I read before. The wrong kind of people. The ones that farm up there. They're us. Me and you. All the other versions of us. One with a trick leg. One that married his cousin. One that was buried alive. Characters out of another history. They're waiting up there. And plotting. Gathering allies. Waiting to make their history ours. So don't go there. You won't find them anywise, being that they hides in the barn. Ooh, what is this place? This was definitely not here before. 
Abbey Rock. I never went here before, did I? Oh, right, the Sisterhood, yeah. Okay, so I've been here, but I haven't... Uh, but last time, it definitely was not in this area. Collect a port report. Let's search around. Same thing as before, I think. Um... Oh, no, this is actually different than what happened before. I think last time I found a dead body. Uh, this time I found a cache. You follow tracks into a sea cave. Someone has stored food, supplies, and ammunition. It can't be the nuns. These crates have a canate look. The Admiralty will want to know about this. Oh wow, that, that was actually really good. Five supplies, five fuel. One torpedo, one strategic information. And once again, time is exclamation mark. Yeah. Well, I was going to head back because I needed fuel, but now I am good to go. Keep looking for the Sphinx Stone. The Salt Lions. Station 3 is to the north. Okay, so it's roughly in the same position it was before as well. Man, I'm exploring so much faster than I was before. Now that I actually know what I'm doing. Uh, that's one of the 140 hit point chips. I'm not going to fight it. Gators Morn. Once again, in roughly the same place. Wait, where is it exactly? Oh, there it is. And I am not going to go around exploring this place, because I know if you do that, you lose Zaylers. And I know now that you do not want to lose Zaylers. Like, I don't think I'm going to risk my Zaylers in a big story event unless I have Max. Ooh, hold on. Got some piracy here. 80 hit points, we can take this one. Come on. A firkin of honey. What in the hell is a firkin? I guess it's some sort of barrel. That is what they call prisoners, or this is what they call prisoners' honey, wrung by the lamplighter bee from the exile's rose. I wonder who made up all these names. Remarks Abel Seaman Cargett. Someone ought to wait. Some someone who has read a sight too many books. I'm I'm thinking. <laughs> You talk in a strange way, Seaman Cargett. Someone who has read a sight too many books, I'm thinking. Well, keep on thinking. Alright. I just said I didn't want to explore the Morn, but I kind of want to? Ah, what's the worst that could happen? Um, nothing? Oh, nope, something. Oh, god damn, not this again. <laughs> Alright, this is the, do you want to side for one side, or the other, or your own side? 
I'm just gonna do the same thing I did before and leave. Goodbye. Alright, I'm going to hope that the salt lines are in roughly the same position that they were before. So I'm just going to go down south and then head back to Fallen London to the west. So down and then left. Is that 100 and... Oh, it's a 90. I, I could do a 90. Yeah, I can do a 90. Especially when they're a terrible pilot and just stick their nose into an island. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna hang back here. Don't worry about it, you're not getting shot at. Oh my god, thank god they're so dumb. fuel, two supplies, and a cache of curiosities. Which had two more fuel. And despite everything that I'm killing, my terror is still going up faster than it's going away. Which is a little bit disturbing. Khan's glory. No thanks. I'm looking for the smell of salt. Ooh. Ooh. A baked breeze rises. The improbable scent of stone out of some distant desert. You are close to the salt lions. Mmm. Ah, you smell that? Yes. Now, which way? Some distance to the southwest? Excellent! So yeah, looks like they're in roughly the same position that they were before. There we go. Hello, and what is that? It's another 90, but there's something else there. What, what is that? I can't see it. Oh, it's a jelly floor. No. No! No, it's coming for me! I'm not gonna fight it. Their turning radius is insane. Insane in the jelly membrane. Wait a minute. Do I actually have the cargo space? Oh wait, it says up here, doesn't it? 21 out of 40. I actually don't. Um... Um, that's fine. I'll just see if I can sell, like, one supply or something. We'll see. Compile a report. Well, we can actually just straight up do salts rights right now. No reason to, though. I don't actually remember what that even did. They have no shops. Hmm. Well, as much as it pains me to get rid of fuel, supplies are worth double what fuel is worth. Supplies cost 20, fuel cost 10, so I guess I'm going to ditch one of the fuel. A say. I have no idea what that means. A say? Does that mean ditch?
Let's throw something overboard. There we go. And then, done. Goodbye, fuel. May you feed the beasts down below. Let's carry the Sphinx down. And visit the Unmakers. Gain a fragment, lost five tear. And we're good to go. Okay, I'm actually going to use my light here. I, I want to manage my terror a little bit more than I did before. I'm not going to use my light constantly, but I think I want to use it at least for the long stretches of darkness. Demu Island. Oh, here it is. Oh, man, I'm going to have so many port reports. That is the Funging Station, which the Admirality wanted me to visit. Let's give my pass. Gain the strategic information, thank you. Oh yeah, this is the place you can get really cheap Zailers. Yeah, it eats up your, um, your time away port thing majig, but uh, it only costs one Echo. Which is totally worth it, that's a great deal. But let's get a port report. Can I either explore, have tea, or accept a volunteer? Let's accept a volunteer. I really want to have Max Zailers. Boing. Said Mutton Island is down here. Let's pay it a visit as well, I guess. Why not? Let's satisfy our hunger, too. Oh, hello. This is kind of awkward. I have no reason to shoot you, because I just satisfied my hunger, so I'm just going to go. Whoa! Get a little excited there. Calm down. Alright, I guess I'm not going to visit the island. Whatever was down there, what was it Mutton Island? Something like that. All right, the inspections. Go ahead. Messages. Let's see. Read the paper. Nothing more to do there. Oh, right. The dispensation. I would absolutely accept that. It didn't seem to result in anything particularly bad before, so... 
sure. Hmm. Then again, I'm also thinking, would Joshua York actually accept this? I don't think he would. So I guess the question is, how much do I want to roleplay this character? Hmm. Honestly, accepting it is just simply the sensible thing to do. Well, regardless, I need to get rid of the Sphinx Stone first if I want to have room to take it. Oh, so much money. So much money. It's beautiful. Just turn in all my millions of reports. Yeah, look at this. I just did in like 40 minutes what it took me hours and hours to do before. I'm so much faster than I was before. Anything in particular you need? Nice, now I'm speaking to the Admiralty. Or at least the top of the Admiralty. Anything in particular they need? Uh, Khan's heart, okay. Let's pass on my two strategic information. 150 echo in more favor, nice. Same thing again. Let's hire on some people. What's more important, though? A Zailer or an Officer? I don't know, Officers are pretty nice. Alright, so this person is a skilled doctor. Unlike the plausible surgeon, who is freaking terrible. Ah, oh, screw it. I'm gonna get an officer. There'll be time for sailors later. Don't worry about it. Of course, I could always do this to get more crew. Do I really want to pay 30 Echo for one more crew, though? I'll be fine. I mean, it's not like I... It's not like my last character met their demise by running out of crew, right? Nah. It's fine. And I wonder, if you take an officer off duty, do they become a crew? Nah, they don't. That's sad. Okay, so, yeah, I got her because I'm pretty sure she's a million times better than this jackass. And, yeah, she is. So this, <laughs> this guy gives hearts plus one. She gives hearts plus six. And iron plus three and one doctor aboard. So much better. Here, you can be the cook. Can I sell my officer? I mean, he's basically basically my slave, right? Is that how that works? Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I believe I forgot something. Oh wait, the guy that wanted to give me the dispensation. He's gone. Oh. Well, that's a shame. Let's also visit the, the uh, university. Took a secret, but that's fine. I think I'll just do another run to the salt lines right now, and then call it a day. Da 
Did I read the paper? Let me check. Let's see if I have any recent news to give these people. Ah, I did. Sweet. Port report here. It's like, hmm, so what changed since I was last here five minutes ago? Uh, the temperature has gone down by two degrees centigrade? Hmm, yes, yeah, fascinating. No, not the chilly floor, go away. Ooh, it didn't spot me. Have the cargo space right? Nineteen and forty. Yep. Let's go a little bit north. Yeah, let's cut across here. southern end of Abbey Rock. I suppose I might as well come in for a port report. Go ahead and watch them. Ah, yes, the dangerous training. Five fragments, and that's it.
Okay, so I could get the navigator. Yeah, let's take him. Come aboard. Plus six mirrors and plus three veils. Gonna eat well tonight. I have no idea why I just put me in combat. Oh, hello. Let's wait for the right opportunity. Mm, you know, I'm kind of low on fuel, actually. Well, no, I got 30 hit points. This is fine. Let's take him out. I'll probably gain fuel from the encounter as well. Bolt of Spider Silk. Okay, that's uh, five fuel worth of silk. It sells for 50. Nothing to hide, come check it out, everything's fine, collect some messages, read the paper. <laughs> I'm getting so used to this. Almost got a routine at this point. Oh my, there's so many things here. Deliver the Sphinx Stone, thank you. Let's hire on some more people. Let's see, more officers or Zaylor? I think once again I'm gonna go for the officers before Zaylors. So let's see, gunnery officer, that'd be nice. Irrepressible cannoneer, also a gunnery officer. Interesting. So she is a gunnery officer who increases iron and veils. And you are a gunnery officer who substantially increases iron. So I guess they're just like more specialized. Although for some reason they're also cheaper. Which is strange. Why are they cheaper? I'm suspicious that they might be a subpar product. Uh, I mean, person. So how much do I care about veils? Well, I guess I care about everything. But let's go with you just to change things up, because I had the presbyterate adventurous before, so let's go with the irrepressible cannoneer. Come aboard! Probably should have read what he said, because I've never had him before. Plus eight iron, nice. 
Let's see what that does to my damage. So I do 16 to 22 at the moment. 16 to 22. Ooh. From 16 to 22 to 18 to 24, so it would increase my damage by 2. That's really good. Okay, 15 out of 40 cargo, plenty of room. Let's go ahead and sell my silk. Almost sold my engine for a second there. Calm down. Don't click buttons too fast. Guess I'll sell my honey, sure. Don't want that stuff cluttering up my cargo hold unless I have a specific reason to keep it. Definitely gonna need some fuel. Unless I accept the dispensation. Hmm. Honestly, it just makes sense. Like, just from the perspective of being somebody who wants to, <laughs> wants to choose the best thing as far as surviving in this world goes, I should take it. But, let's roleplay a little bit. No. I don't think... Joshua would, Joshua would actually take the offer. I will not deny, deny that I'm a little saddened, and I think that my patron will also share my sadness. But I understand that you know your business and that a Z-Captain is a free spirit. And I will explain carefully to my patron that you mean no insult by the refusing of his kind gift. Zale Zafe. <laughs> Ah, the tattoo. Let's see. I guess keep going with the mirrors thing. Sure. Increase my mirrors by two. And lost all my terror. Sweet. Okay, what do you want? Zoop or muter salt? Apparently it's to the north along the coast. And Oh, this one's also in the north. Interesting. If I could actually supply both of these at the same time, that would be pretty awesome. So this one's worth 700 echoes and this one's worth 1000. Okay. And you know what's really annoying is the fact that these quests don't show up in my quest journal. At least, not the specifics. <laughs> not the important stuff, basically. Like, if I look at my journal... Oh, wait a minute. No, it actually does show up. It's just, for some reason, it's like a separate objective. Like, this one for him just says he has a plan, but then it looks like it's here. Find seven skins of Zoop or seven packages of Muter Salt. So it actually does show up. Although it doesn't tell you where you can actually find them or how much he'll give you for them, so it is still missing important information. Unless... Well, uh, you can't expand it, but that doesn't actually... It still doesn't tell you. Yeah. It's weird. So let me just write this down. Just kind of the prices. So I know if it's worth it when I go to actually buy it. And also where it is, which is the north. 7 meter salt. 1,000. And north. There we go. Bones, nothing there. Port reports, yes, got a bunch. Here you go, thank you. Here you go, thank you. Here you go, thank you. I think that's it. Yep. 
Yep, I do believe so. Probably should purchase a bit of fuel. Yeah, I definitely should. Let's do that. Alright, if I keep my current amount, I'm going to have just enough uh, cargo space to deliver more Sphinx Stone, but I'm going to burn through a lot of fuel actually getting there and back, of course. So, let's buy three more. Yeah, this should be fine. And just to check, I just want to make sure that they don't have Zoop or the Muter Salt. Because one time they actually did have what the trader wanted, and it was actually worth it to just buy it here. Which was really weird. Yeah, so it looks like they don't. But they will pay for it. And in fact... You know, just in case... When I find it in the north, just in case I can actually buy it for cheaper than I can sell it, I should probably write down the prices. The well, Zoop is 70, and the Salt is 50. Because if I can buy it for cheaper than I can sell it here, then I might as well just fill up my cargo hold with as much as I can carry. Okay, well, I think I'll end this episode here. Yeah, just to sum up what's happened so far... This has been an incredibly successful start. It, it just feels so much better now that I know what to do and how to play and kind of where things are and what to look for, like to look for the salt lions and stuff like that. It's going so much smoother. I mean, look at everything I just discovered. I just discovered all of this within an hour. Like, this is freaking amazing. I made so much progress. I was worried that starting over would feel very slow, but this is actually going very fast. I feel like I'm practically caught up to where I was before. And I'm actually not, but it kind of feels like it. So, pretty cool. Alright, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.